Okay, we're back here at EMC World. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We've got the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier. I'm joined with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org, and Jeff Taylor is here. He's the Vice President of Global Channel Strategy and Operations uh, at EMC, and uh, welcome. Hey, thank you, very excited to be here. You guys are making a big push in the channel. Uh, on the last uh, earnings call, I think it was Joe Tucci, or maybe it was David Goulden, said, that you guys are about 50% through the channel now. Um, so obviously you made a big push there. EMC for years wasn't known as a channel friendly company. You guys have made that transformation. <laughs> How did you make that transformation and where are we today? Sure, thanks. So um, first of all, we're here at our second annual Global Partner Summit. We have over 3,000 partners. Attendance is up, excitement is up. Uh, and, uh, and I think it's, a, it's an example of some of the things we're doing differently uh, to drive. What really is, if you include all of our channel partners, more like 60% of our revenue goes through the channel. And if you look at certain product business units, it jumps to 80%. So we've had great results. And what are we doing differently? Well, I think we're listening better than we have and listening in a really structured and systematic way. Like we want our program, we want our business to be increasingly more and more partner built. And those references and those revenue and booking numbers reflect that. Right, we've, we do, for example, a partner survey, Voice of Partner. Greg referenced it, Billy referenced it. We, twice a year, survey our partners. We had 2,000 respondents come back this year and they rated us 25% above our peer group, both hardware and software, in terms of satisfaction and loyalty. Over 80% of our partners think of us as a trusted advisor and an, and an important uh, trusted partner with them. So I think we're listening differently, we're driving a partner built program and that, uh, that has a, a series of actions and implications uh, that, we've, that we've taken. Jeff, so I, got, I got to ask you, I mean, obviously I'm a, been a huge, I'm a huge fan of the channel, Dave knows, always when I, I always get lit up on this channel conversations. So I spent a big part of my career at HP during the 90s, the late 80s, early 90s, during the channel boom of you know, resellers and whatnot, and system integrators, VARs, VABs, ISVs, whatever you want to call it these days. But it, there's a challenging time right now because obviously in the channel business, gross margin's everything. Right, you got it. These guys want to make margin, sure. and commodity hardware like PCs have shown that services can be nice, nice wraparounds of those to that driving margin. But now you guys also sell hard drives and have good margin, decent margins. But yet around them, we heard about this transformation messages. What are some of those high-powered, high-octane services that you hear from your partners that you guys that get gets wrapped around EMC? Is it more cloud? Is it more big data? Is it more? I mean, what what are some of the things that you can highlight? Yeah, sure, I think there are three things that, um, that are margin enhancing for our partners. Right? The first is vSpecs. Right? So, um, what we do with vSpecs, one, it's the fastest growing reference architecture in the market, 2,200 units have been sold uh, to date, and, we'll, and we're expanding, based on partner feedback, the applications, in, including Microsoft, uh, uh, SQL, and Exchange, and, in, and enhancing the performance, adding and announcing today uh, vPlex for continuous availability on our solution. Why is that important and why does it help services? Well, we, we build and test those solutions and stacks in our lab, and then we build, give, give tools for size and configuration and deployment to our partners, so they don't have to do that. They can sell services all around that so you stack. you reduce the steps it takes for them to sell them. That's and, right. And, and deploy it. That's right, so, so that's certainly one. The second thing we do is we have uh, and launched uh, last year a cloud services, cloud server, services provider program. Right, we've seen 40% year over year growth in that program. We see increasing expansion in the diversity of offerings our partners use based on our own technology. Again, the concept of really um, increasingly more sophisticated enablement and uh, pre-building of solutions so that our partners can take on what we have, take it to the market and sell it. So what specifically did you guys do uh, to enhance your programs? Can you talk in more detail about sort of what you offered channel partners and what the impact was? Sure, so uh, I think there are a couple things we were trying to do, right? We want our program to always be simple, predictable, and profitable. So for simplicity, we took, we took in, and made it more uh, sales friendly. We took the implementation engineer requirement out. So we want partners who can sell and pre-sell, but we made it easier for our partners to get on board, get specialties, and start earning rebates and increase margin. The second, for predictability, we have a dollar one rebate that's targeted at uh, more of our, uh, our strategic products the VNX, the data domain, our extreme IO products. So that adds, that adds a bit of predictability uh, to our partners. 
And then in terms of profitability, we increasingly expand the products that, that are available, including things like Mosey and Atmos, and bring those into our product portfolio so partners selling any portion of EMC can gain margin. So those are three big important changes. So how do you get people trained up? I mean, obviously the channel business is very high leverage um, and, and you guys do a lot of success there. You mentioned the numbers earlier. Uh, how do you get guys ready to sell? I mean, because you know, that's a key thing, you know, being, because you're representing, you're, they're representing your brand, right? And, but also at the same time, they need to be savvy to know where to plug. It's not just that simple to say, oh, here's a solution from EMC. Here's a wide range of solutions. Sure. So how do you guys handle that whole working with the channel there? Yeah, I think, there, you know, I think there are two things. For a long time, we've focused on accreditation. So getting our partners trained and accredited on our solutions. And we have what, what um, we believe to be differentiated product training in terms of our portfolio and the solutions associated with that. What we've done recently, though, is extend from accreditation into competence by getting our partners out into the field and doing endorsements with our reps and with our DMs. So in the US alone, there are over 400 endorsed uh, partner reps We've started EMC Ready for partner pre-sales as another training element. We have over 100 pre-sales rep, reps today and it's growing literally every single day as partners want to get access to our sales force, get access to our selling acumen. So we really are focused on sales engagement and driving training again and a broader enablement really out into the field that the customer face. Yeah, you're really trying to make it an extension of your, your internal sales force. Uh, uh, so our sales folks, is it comp neutral for them? How does that all work? Yeah, so for the, for the majority of our sales forces and the majority of our accounts, which are channel only, it's comp neutral. They're incented to work with partners. They get um, the same benefits um, as they do. We don't comp our, our reps on services because we want the partners to pick those up. We see that as an increasingly larger portion of their uh, margin in their business. So we want our partners to take on the services. We continue to service enable them. We want that to be a bigger that's portion. That's a nice channel message. I mean, you got you got. I mean, that's pretty much, that's their bread and butter for the partners. They, no need, they make a lot of money and high, 100% gross profit on those on those services. Right, exactly. In most cases. Right, and you know, we, last year we announced our collaborative services, for example, which is a way to take, you know, all of our engineering capability, put it in the back office to allow testing on a variety of products and a variety of environments that our partners can pre-sell as a as a, a, a testing tool for them. So, on the, how do you guys go to market? Join sales calls. Um, you guys provide more tooling for the for the partners. Um, explain that a little bit? Sure, I think we divide it into two segments. One, at the very top, at the enterprise, which is an increasingly smaller number of accounts. Uh, it increases, and it decreases more and more. You know, we go, to, we go with partners. We lead those accounts, those are our global most important accounts, and we lead those accounts with our direct team and we bring in partners to supplement yeah. us. So that direct team's not taking orders, they're pushing the orders to the partner? So at the top end of our enterprise, like most other vendors, we have global accounts and we run those direct and we have a whole complement of resources to do that. Got it. But, but below those, very small number of accounts, you enter channel only territory. And then that channel only segment from the enterprise select all the way down to the SMB, we go joint sales calls. You know, the rules of engagement require that our reps go on a second sales call with partners. You know, we enforce those rules of engagement. You know, we, we drive enablement and mentorship and require our reps and, and sales engineers to mentor our partners through those sales calls. Jeff, you mentioned the, cl the cloud service provider program. Is that, is that the Velocity Partner Program, or is that something different? Uh, it, the, the it's, something, it's something different. So last year we realized that we wanted a separate and distinct uh, cloud program. So we have a Velocity Solution Provider Program, which is for the resellers. We have the Velocity uh, VGAP Program, which is for Alliance Partners. And we have a uh, Service Provider Program that goes across both. So we realized that the Alliance Partners that effectively every reselling and alliance partner wanted to be a service provider. So we created a universal program that's accessible to any of our partners that could be part of our uh, service provider program. And, and what do you call that program again? The Velocity Service that's Provider That's the Velocity, program. okay, so that Velocity Service Provider program. Can you talk about, so cloud is a channel, right? And, sure. and you've got the, the channel partners, you've got the, the cloud becoming a channel. How, is, how are your channel partners responding to the cloud? Uh, it's, 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 a, it's disruptive? and a threat on one hand, on the other hand it's an opportunity. So how are they making it into an opportunity? Uh, I think they see it in, I think they see it in a couple ways. Some of those, some of our bigger partners are investing in moving forward and joining that program and becoming infrastructure providers and platform providers. And as I said, we've seen great growth and a great adoption of that. I think other partners, smaller partners, are looking for uh, brokerage opportunities, trying to connect with other larger partner infrastructure players as a way to, uh, to offer a solution 
that um, when, when they know they don't have the capital resources to become a service provider. So we're working on ways to broker those opportunities through our partners and to get those, uh, to connect those dots. And are they, are they transforming their skill sets? I mean, for instance, are they focusing more on security? Or you mentioned sort of cloud brokering. How are they transforming their skills? Well, so I think they're, um, they're learning more about what the, where the workloads are heading and talking more about, you know, talking more with business drivers who are building workloads and putting them into the cloud and changing the focus uh, more from the, as much as the IT and the, and the data center administrator over to the, uh, to the business leader. And how are you guys sort of supporting that sort of skills transformation? I mean, what kind of resources do they get, they get access to and, and how do you accelerate that? Sure, well one, I think, as we talked about before, we have a world-class training program in terms of what, what it means to offer our platform as a service. We have solutions and solution kits that enable partners to, to get on board. We have a special a specialty team of, of sales leaders that are out working with the partners to build their business and to drive leads and educate our sales force. Those, that specialty team will go on calls with the business leads, communicate the, the opportunities, and they know uh, our service provider community and what capabilities they have, and they're directing opportunities to, uh, to that larger group. How do you manage the variability across um, you know, regions, you know, within North America, even and then globally. There's got to be, you know, quite a bit of variability, and you're trying to get as much commonality as possible. How do you deal with that challenge? Sure, I think we face that on, you know, all the things we've been trying to do for the last two years. It's to create a globally consistent program, and what, you know, the way we approach it is we define an end state that we're driving towards. Take take anything, our global program, the Enterprise Select, our Focus program, all the elements and key initiatives we're driving, and we define an end state that we're moving towards. And each of those markets is at different stages of maturity and how, how far they've come and our own capabilities, the market's capabilities. And so we'll, we just, we monitor and manage and drive that activity and let, the, let those theaters develop towards the same end state over time. So it's, it takes careful management and diligence and oversight, but we allow the theaters to develop and mature as they are, as they're working their way. Jeff, you talked about some of the survey work that you guys did. Um, I want to drill into that a little bit. So what, what set EMC apart. Can you share with us some of, some of the, you know, examples or proof points? Sure. I think what um, one of the main things that partners look for is a product portfolio because they need innovation and they need a differentiated point of view. So consistently, we rate amongst our partner population, you know, head, head and shoulders above the competition in our product portfolio, right? And and I think, and I'll chill down that one for a second if I could. Mm -hmm. You know, take a concept like big data, right? That's something that's confusing. It's, uh, it's worrisome for most, for our customers it's hard. and our partners. <laughs> it's hard, they don't understand it. They, they, you know, some if you talk to them and quietly, they're worried about being overtaken as, you know, uh, by a variety of different competitors and a variety of different offerings. And what we've done with EMC is we've, we've launched Pivotal, right? That, adds, that will add a proof point and a pathway with a, with a legitimate visionary. You know, GE has already legitimized it with a $100 million investment. So we will develop a path for our partners and our, our uh, community to take advantage of big data and, and give them an on-road to have right now interesting discussions, give them, put them on the forefront. And those are the kinds of things that our partners look for us to do. It's to deliver them the power of our vision and something they can translate into their own strength. And, and the big data with Pivotal, I think, is a perfect example of that. Jeff, talk about the biggest misconception people have of, of uh, your channel business. You know, people describe that this concept of old tapes, and, and I think there was a time 10 years ago or some years ago where you know, EMC was a very strong direct selling engine, and, and there was bad behavior in the field. And I think if you really go and investigate and talk to a whole, whole tranche of new partners and our existing loyal partners, what you really see, and we hear it consistently, I'm out talking to partners, talking to, talking to customers all the time, what you, what you see is really a different phase. They see that EMC has changed, they see the demeanor, the posture, the disposition has changed, and you know, they're welcoming, and, and, and we're seeing the results, and we're seeing the growth out of our partner community. And they're making money. Yeah, yeah, which money. is what it's yeah. all about in the channel. Yeah. And you see the right. attendance, you have over 3,000 yeah. people here, they're excited. You know, they, sh they show up and, and they're vocal. Right. Yeah. Okay, Jeff Taylor with uh, EMC's channel business. Obviously the channel's a great way to go to market with this tsunami of transformation, big data, software-led infrastructure. A lot of opportunities for partners, system integrators to new, new, new breed of consultants to the old school. A lot of opportunity, a lot of gross profit. And, uh, and ultimately customers get uh, modernized infrastructure. So this is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. <laughs>